Hey there, and welcome to Akteship. I'm Amir DeLeon, and I'm a photographer and a videographer, and I'm here to help you get started into your creative journey. Akteship is a unique program that encourages the youth based in the Middle East to follow their passion of photography, videography, or printing, and it helps transform it into a career path that reflects who they are. Designing created to support the artistic visions of the youth, the competition is open to individuals of the age of 14 to 25. The final prize award to the winner of the competition, which includes 15,000 dirham cash prize and 15,000 dirham worth of Canon products and a year-long membership at a local entrepreneurship incubator where he or she can start their new businesses. The program is divided into four modules. Collectively, these modules serve as tools to help you through the process of designing and launching a successful creative business. The first module challenges youth to find their artistic voices. Modules two to four guide youth through the process of developing a business concept, portfolio, and website. The second module of the program is focused on helping you to get started on your path towards the creative journey. Having a business concept is an essential step in the process of launching your creative career. A business concept is a document that describes the most basic parts of a business, what you're selling, who you're selling it to, and how you plan to achieve your business goals. My role today is to take you through how my business is centered on photography and how you can use photography to help advertise or build your business. Whether you're an upcoming photographer or a newbie, this video will have tips and tricks for you all. I'm Amir Delian and I'm 20 years old and currently I create videos for social media, specifically TikTok, YouTube and Instagram and I also produce videos for brands and businesses. So my role as a creator isn't your typical photographer or videographer. I mainly produce trendy and relatable content that teaches you small camera tricks and hacks and also inspire them to utilize the simplest things into a creative way. So what got me into photography and videography goes way back from when I was in school. And all I can tell you is it started out of passion because I literally documented everything from going to school, coming home, hanging out with friends, and uh, all of this went up on social media. And because of that, I collaborated and networked with a lot of people to the point where I got a lot of opportunities and this opened my mind to a whole different realm. <laughs> At the young age of 20, I have shot videos and images for some big brands and companies, leaving my mark as an upcoming photographer. I was constantly teased for being a child of mixed race and also for being chubbier than others my age. This pushed me to take up fitness where I would take videos of myself working out and literally document everything. And that led me to actually falling in love to making content than fitness itself. And from there, I just networked and my love just grew more and more. I first started getting recognition on TikTok where I started posting video tutorials and behind the scene footage to some of the amazing shoots I've done. My top quality and easy to understand videos made me stand out on the platform. The constant increase in my following and viewer engagement got my work recognized by top brands and people from around the world. So all the work on my platform includes a wide variety of content which consists of portraits, landscapes, automotive, and even in the last few months, a lot of quarantine homemade photos and videos. And from shooting all of those, that led me to hitting that viral mark which enabled me to reach millions and millions of people from around the globe. I wouldn't say it was an easy task at all because all of it was practically a lot of trial and error and experimenting with all sorts of content to get that one thing that I'm passionate about. So the time I invested in making all of my content was well worth it because it led me to actually gaining more experience and actually earning a bit more money, which is not technically my main motivation on why I do what I do. It's just it's very essential to actually grow yourself as a creator. At a young age, working as a freelance photographer and videographer while in school wasn't an easy task. But I was really confident enough from the passion that I have and I really took that risk, which not many people would do, and that is drop out. This is definitely not the path for everybody, but I was convinced that I had the potential to actually learn more and be more creative outside of school that can maybe one day lead me to a career. Taking that risk was one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it opened up a lot of new doors for me when it comes to projects and it even led me to having the platform that I have today. Personally, I'm really humbled by the fact that people out there are taking my work as an example for their own creations. <laughs> and uh, that's just pretty crazy to me. Photography is important because it allows people to see the world from different points of view and to admire the most different scenarios and situation captured in a frozen moment. Photography is so powerful that it allows you to bring experiences to others in the form of images and it enables the diffusion of information of things as they really are. 
Creating a good brand is a tricky and a subtle thing, and most of us don't even have the benefit of having a marketing team at our beck and call. Your photos represent your brand, and when people want to visit your website or social media, they will want to get to know you and what is it that you can offer to them that is different. Having basic and adequate skills and knowledge in photography can greatly help you not only in advertising and marketing in your business, but it allows you to share your unique outlook and perspective with your audience. One of the most important aspects of establishing an attractive brand is the ability to clearly convey who and what your business is while offering your customers something that's immediately recognizable as desirable. The benefits of an engaged social media community that shares, likes, and retweets your content are impossible to overstate. Displaying professionally taken photos alongside your social media posts make them far more likely to be engaged by your desired audiences, growing your brand and reaching more potential customers organically. It's important to connect with your customers in an empathetic way. They already trust your brand, and digital marketing can make it easy to stay connected when your routines are disrupted or as your team gets ready to go back to work. The Canon EOS M50 is a stylish mirrorless camera equipped with a high resolution electronic viewfinder, a large grip, and a very angle LCD touchscreen in a compact body. So this nifty camera right over here has a 24.1 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, and it has a native ISO range of 100 to 25,600. It is also the first Canon camera with a new Digic 8 image processor. It can shoot up to 10 frames per second into continuous shooting mode. It has improved dual pixel CMOS autofocus. It has a 3 inch vary angle touchscreen and a 0.39 inch OLED electronic viewfinder. And let's not forget, it also shoots 4K. One of the best things about this camera is that it's really light and the grip allows you to hold the camera comfortably in your hands. One of the user-friendly features of this camera is the M-FN button, which is conveniently positioned to the bottom left of the shutter button. You can set this button to be a shortcut to your most frequently used function. The EOS M50 is the first EOS M camera to feature dual sensing IS, which enables better image stabilization, which means you can avoid getting that really, really shaky shots. The new photographers suddenly became more intimidated by their DSLRs as they thought, in order to be like the pros, they needed to forgo the camera's automatic modes and shoot manual mode only. So now we're gonna talk about aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. The aperture is a small set of blades in the lens that controls how much light will enter the camera. The blades create an octagonal shape that can be widened or closed down to a small hole. If you shoot with the aperture wide open, then more light is allowed into the camera than if the aperture is closed down to only allow a tiny hole of the light to enter the camera. Aperture sizes are measured by f-stops. A high f-stop like f22 meaning that the aperture hole is quite small and a low f-stop like f3.5 meaning that the aperture is wide open. The aperture also controls the depth of field. Depth of field is how much of the picture is sharp and how much is blurry in the background. The shutter is a curtain in the camera that quickly rolls over the image sensor and allows light to shine onto the sensor for a fraction of a second. The longer the shutter allows light to shine onto the image sensor, the brighter the picture since more light is gathered. A darker picture is produced when the shutter moves very quickly and only allows light to touch the imaging sensor for a tiny fraction of a second. The duration that the shutter allows light onto the image sensor is called the shutter speed, and it's measured in fractions of a second. So, a shutter speed of half a second will allow more light to touch the sensor and will produce a brighter picture than a shutter speed of 1 to 100th of a second. Keep in mind that the shutter speed is also responsible for controlling the amount of blur in a picture. All right, so let's talk about the ISO. The ISO controls the exposure by using software in the camera to make it extra sensitive to light. A high ISO such as ISO 1600 will produce a brighter picture than a lower ISO of ISO 100. The drawback to increasing the ISO is that it makes the picture noisier. Digital noise in photos taken with digital cameras is random pixels scattered all over the photo. It is a similar effect as grain in film photography and it degrades the photo quality. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the most important factors when shooting photos and videos and that is focus. One important technique to understand in photography, especially when you're starting out, is the concept of focus. In every photo you take, there will always be a plane of focus. This is the region in space, the potential to be as sharp as possible in a photo. Focusing can be easy or difficult, depending on your subject, like a non-moving landscape versus a fast-moving bird in flight. Autofocus systems use a motor in the camera or lens to focus on a subject you've selected manually or automatically. So, just press a button on your camera and it will focus on your chosen subject or choose one for you if you prefer. 
Still, manual focus stuck around for a reason. If your camera is having trouble focusing, such as in a dark condition, manual focus lets you override any issues or make any precise adjustment that the camera may have missed. And if you set your lens to manual focus, you can lock focus for a series of photos in a row. Okay, so now let's talk about lighting setups. The key to great portrait photography is understanding portrait lighting. This is true for natural, ambient light, as well as artificial light. These lighting patterns and positions and explanations are designed for beginners, but are also great reminders for advanced photographers. Butterfly lighting, also known as paramount lighting. It is named after the butterfly-shaped shadow that's created beneath the nose. Place the main light source above and directly behind your camera. Point it down slightly on your subject. Butterfly lighting creates a shadow underneath the chin, nose, and around the cheeks. When the subject is turned at an angle, it can create more dramatic shadows underneath the cheekbones. The higher you position the light behind you and above the subject, the longer the shadows will get underneath the nose and chin. It's flattering for most faces. Rembrandt lighting, named after the Dutch painter who used this style in his work. Rembrandt lighting is pretty similar to loop lighting. In Rembrandt lighting, however, the shadow loop of the nose is long enough to connect with the shadow on the cheek. This traps a triangle of light on the cheek. Profile lighting, also known as rim lighting, is sometimes used in sports portraiture because it looks kind of heroic. The most common type of application of this kind of lighting is to position your light behind your subject. This creates an edge around your subject, giving them definition and separation from the background. Consistency and dedication played an important role in my career and my growth as a creator. And being able to constantly create content, collaborate, and experience different skill set has really gotten me far. But the most important thing for me is to have an open mind. Keep trying new things. I mean, practice does make perfect. Use other people's opinions on your work constructively and never let that affect you. Ultimately, you will find your own style in creating content. This will introduce you to so many business opportunities for you to expand yourself financially and uh, professionally. This competition is a great opportunity to kickstart your creative business and even to support you with the tools that you need to create. It's a head start. Participants will complete tasks assigned to them over four modules. To enter the competition, simply follow the guidelines on the website and check it for regular updates. Go to en.canon-me.com slash actashift-program slash. The grand prize winner will be awarded with 15,000 dirham cash prize and 15,000 dirham worth of Canon products and a year-long membership at a local entrepreneurship incubator where the winner can launch his or her business. Best of luck, participants.